Well, you're going to the chapel, you're going to get married. How old were you when you got married? A new study says, out of the University of Texas by Mark Regneris, he's a sociology professor down there, he says maybe people are getting it all wrong, saying you've got to wait until you're settled, wait until your career is going, until you've got the money set up. That is perhaps not the way to go, and getting married younger is the good way to go. Dave Quist is the executive director of the Institute of Marriage and Family. Dave uh, joins me now, and I find out that you, you actually beat me in the marriage sweepstakes. You got married even younger. You're 21 now, and how old were you when you got married? I was 19 when I got married, actually. 19. I was exceptionally young. but I... Okay, so you've been married two years, because, I mean, your youthful <laughs> looks and, you know. I'll keep coming back here if you say that. Okay, so 19. Wow. Very young. So that, that, the average age for men in Canada, mm -hmm. the latest stats I have from StatsCan is... 30.6 years. Right. Uh, for women, 28.5. Right. It has been going up for, for several years. Yes. Uh, is this a good thing or a bad thing? How do people, do they have it right when they say, I want to make sure that I'm settled, uh, that I you know, have enough money, that I, uh, my career is underway? Well, Mark actually raised a very interesting point when he was talking about this at our conference in, in early May. You, you had him in to speak here in Ottawa at right. the Institute for Marriage and Family Th Conference. That's correct. And, and we asked him to speak about this very issue. The point that he was bringing forward is that we've, we've sort of reversed the way things were a decade ago, maybe two decades ago. At one point, they were what they call naturalists. The people are just simply, we fell in love, we got married, and then we, we carried on through life after that. We, we, we just figured out careers, we figured out if there's going to be education, post-secondary education, we figured out family issues, we figured out where we're going to live if, if careers took us someplace. Now we've sort of reversed all that. And suddenly, as individuals, because we, we put a lot of emphasis on individual rights and individual freedoms and things like that, we've actually made the decision across the nation, across the Western culture, actually, to say, I want to have some years of freedom, I want to have my schooling put together, I want to have my career launched, and at some point then, I'm going to get married. And so we've changed those, those numbers that you said are, are quite correct, but they've shifted probably eight years well, later I'll, in I'll life. tell you what they were in 1961. Mm. Men, on average, this is on average, some mm. older, some younger, men on average got married at 25. Right. Women got married at 22. Right. I got married in the late 90s. I was 26 and uh, had my first son at two years later at 28. I was looked at like a, a teen father right. on the playground, I can tell you. We were living in Montreal. We'd go down to Westmount, and I was surrounded by guys who were... Um, several, several years older. Oftentimes, I think they were, you know, uh, or grandfather, uh, was the second family with, uh, right. with the trophy wife given the neighborhood I was in. Uh, but uh, I, I felt like I was a teen father. I mean, right. it's, you're right. It's completely changed the way we look at things. Right. And there's a couple of aspects of that. One is that the way we view marriage and, and its importance, we've sort of put it secondarily down the list a little bit in terms of getting our, the rest of our life in order, as opposed to actually building that, those things together. And so my wife and I, we went through, I was married young and, and she was a little bit younger than, than she is now, but she was a little bit older than me at the time. And, and what she, we did is, is we built that life together. And, and that's a part that's, that's flipped over. Part of that, what Dr. Regneris is saying, is actually around the value of sex. And that, that um, the, the value, the price of sex has actually gone way down partly because of, of our moral and ethical slide in many ways, partly because of birth control and most notably the, the pill. But, but what's happened is that individuals uh, looking for sex, uh, they don't have to make other commitments. They can, they can, they can find it anywhere. They can find it anywhere. Uh, uh, just ask Osama bin Laden. Well, <laughs> get a good collection, I hear. <laughs> so we're told, so we're told. But there was a time when to, to have sex meant being married, and to be married meant showing that you were committed as a relationship, that you had some potential to, to go out and, and make your way in the world and things like that. Maybe you didn't have a, those achievements yet, but you're willing to and you had the desire, and you could, you could woe your partner, and, and, uh, and, and suddenly that woman thought that I had potential, and together we built that life together. That's all changed a great deal. And I don't think that's gonna, going to reverse, at least not for no. the majority of people. So. The question then becomes, I, I know couples that have married young, I know couples mm -hmm. that have married late, and, and I think that for each family, they're going to have to figure it out for themselves. Sure. Maybe you just don't meet the right person. Right. But as a society, our view seems to be that you've got to wait until you're older. 
And is, yes. is that the right viewpoint, is my question. Well, that's, that's a, that's a $64,000 question, and there's probably no right answer for that. Uh, you know, younger people have been married and been very successful. Older people have been married and been very successful in their, their relationships as well. On average, though, as those numbers show, we've shifted upwards. A couple of things come into play there. When we're older, before we get married, um, our, our sexual fertility drops way off. We're in the middle of a... So a, having kids is more difficult than we're so seeing. If you wait till you're 35, 36, 37 and try and have kids, it's going to be tougher. We're past those peak fertility years, uh, having kids is going to be far more difficult. We also bring Then you're baggage. tired. <laughs> yes, yeah, as, as, as an older father, you don't have the energy to be with the kids. Yeah. The the other part of that is that, that as we, we we get married older, we also bring our own Back baggage or background and things like that. You know, if I didn't get married until I was mid to late 30s or something like that, I've been an independent adult for 10 or 12 years. I've finished high school, maybe I've gone through, through university, grad school, maybe I've worked for another six years after that, and suddenly I've got a life that I've built on my own. My potential wife, she's done the same thing. And so now we're trying to mesh these things together, and maybe I have my likes and my dislikes, she has her likes and her dislikes, her foibles, my foibles, and suddenly we're trying to mesh these two things together. And that proves difficult. Built on top of the issue that we're more independent, we suddenly say, well, I don't think I'm interested in this kind of relationship. And so we depart ways after that as well. That's one of the reasons that we're seeing cohabitation rates rise dramatically in the last while as well. It, cohabitation uh, is up uh, most dramatically in Quebec, where yes. I mean, uh, virtually nobody gets married anymore. Right. Uh, are, are there studies looking at, at, at whether age plays a factor? Because I remember when I was... Uh, you know, before I was married and people were trying to give me advice on whether I should or shouldn't, they'd say, well, you know, back in the 60s, we all got married young and then everyone got divorced. Right. I actually think it's because the divorce laws only became wide open in the late 70s or, or early 80s. There was a flood of divorces because yeah. you could actually do it yeah. before that. It was tough. Yeah, 1968 no-fault divorce laws were, were actually changed in the country. And if you look on, on the rate of divorce shortly after those years, the rate goes dramatically upwards. Uh, some would argue that the divorce laws were too restrictive at, before that time period. And there may be some justification for that in what we call high-risk marriages, where there's some form of abuse, verbal abuse, physical abuse, drug and alcohol abuse, and things of that nature. But actually, high-risk divorces or high-risk marriages only make up 4% of all the marriages that we actually have. And so th that percentage is very low. But when we open the door to having anything you want, then divorce goes incredibly high. Hence, uh, cohabitation has risen dramatically, especially in Quebec, you're right. Okay, well, I'm gonna put you on the spot now because I know you're a father as well. Would mm -hmm. you uh, tell your own kids to get married at 19? Maybe not 19. But uh, we have actually had some of those discussions. My kids are in their early 20s right now. I'm certainly not pushing them to get married, but at the same time, we've had some very civil conversations around the issue of should they, shouldn't they? They're finishing university right now and looking at, uh, they've they both got significant others at this point and saying, how do we do this? And so we're having that conversation right now. All right, interesting times at the dinner table. Indeed. And a discussion to keep going on. Food for thought.